whatever I present any issue in the English language, because this is, this is what I do, that's what I do for a living, I teach the language, I try, I try to make it easy to grasp. Mm, why? Because you need to see that it is not rocket science, it is not that difficult, and that you will manage. Um, Many students, many of you come to us and you say that you have a lot of trouble speaking the language, you have a lot of trouble standing tenses because you get them mixed, and you have a lot of trouble understanding also unreal tenses. And this is what I would like to refer to today, to the unreal tenses. But if I am to present the subject to you of unreal tenses, uh, like the, the bits, the pain points in the matter, I would need to also refer a little bit to um, tenses as such, because I think, I believe that uh, the best thing to, to do when you study grammar, grammar usually proves to be a problem for most of the uh, students, when you study grammar, it's good to look at the names, right? Because we have tenses, just regular tenses, present simple, present continuous, past simple, past continuous, and then we have unreal tenses. And I think it's good to see why these names are so different. So when we come to, when we talk about tenses, the regular tenses, we have to understand that what we describe with these tenses, it is the regular reality that is around us. So when it comes to the present, you would describe any present activities, both simple and continuous. So like, I am a teacher of English, right? I teach English on a regular basis. And right now I am speaking English to you. I, I am presenting to you. So that would be present, right? In the past, we know that the past is what, what happened today, but yesterday actually that happened in the past. Yes. So we would, we would say that yesterday I had this great breakfast or I met a friend of mine with past continuous. You would say that yesterday at 11, I was working on my computer. Mm, when it comes to the future, right, we are going to describe things that will happen in an hour that will happen tomorrow. Like I will, I will do it or it will rain tomorrow. Or if you are more sure you would like to present uh, your intentions, you you would say that I am going to buy a new car this year. Actually, it's a good time to uh, make um, resolutions and to plan what you are going to make uh, next year, for instance. And I believe that uh, if you look at these regular tenses this way, you understand what they represent, right? So they represent this regular, regular reality that is around us. But Another group of tenses or another group of um, structures that you need to grasp, you need to understand in the English language, they are the unreal tenses. And when you look at the names, you see that one of the tenses, that, that um, some tenses, the, the, they are real, so to say. Yes, they are just tenses. And another group it says that they are unreal. So let's think why they are called unreal. Well, they are called unreal because they, they describe the activities that are not real, that do not happen. They describe our wishes. They describe what we would like to have, what we uh, would like to um, happen, what would be wonderful if it had happened like uh, in the past. Mm, because unreal tenses can refer both, both to the present and to the past. I will start with these unreal tenses, unreal expressions in the present. And as I told you, as I, as I uh, advise every single time, you need to combine it. You need to join it to some other structure in the language so that you can see that the language is one piece, one whole. And if you know this, it'll be so much easier to put your thoughts together and to make full sentences. Um, so with um, unreal tenses, when we talk about unreal tenses, we can refer to conditionals, right? Because actually it is a very similar element of the language. And, and a couple of Sentence, sentence examples here that would be if I had more time I would I would get a dog because then I could walk this dog more often but the reality yes it is that I don't have this time so I cannot get this dog and I cannot walk it very often please pay attention to the tense if I had more time yes so we refer to the past I mean we use the past tense but we actually talk about the present. And that's why this structure is called unreal tenses, because it describes the activity, the situation that is not real, that is not happening, because actually I don't have this time. So I have to say, if I had this time, I would get a dog and I would walk it more often, very often. Another example is, if I were you, 
Mind you, all of you who know the past uh, tense, they know that we we say, I was, yes, so I was at work yesterday, I was very happy when I was a little child, so you use the expression I was, but with unreal tenses, you can, you can, you can say I was, but actually what is more preferred would be I were, so if I were you, because with this very structure, you suggest how impossible it is, how untrue it is, because we cannot become another person, we will never be another person, we'll never be our friend, but we can use it in a sentence. We can put it um, with this expression and we can say, if I were you, I wouldn't do that. Once again, we are using the past tense to describe that um, something that doesn't, uh, that, that, uh, something that uh, doesn't happen or, 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 or didn't, th- didn't happen, something that is not real uh, because I am not you. Yeah, so that's why I say, if I were you, I would uh, I would do that or I wouldn't do that. And this expression works very well when we want to advise other people, when we want to tell them what they should or shouldn't um, do. Of course, uh, we build with unreal tenses for the present with the past tense, mind you, here comes the twist. Of course, we also make um, uh, negations, yes? So um, we, we can we can say, if only I weren't so busy, yes? I would meet you more often. But the fact is that actually I am busy, so I cannot meet you more often. Um, in the Polish language, uh, because this is our mother tongue, and sometimes it's good to refer to your mother tongue. Not always, but sometimes it is good. We have exactly the same thing, yes? So for the... Present, we, we use a past expression, and this is how uh, we say that something is not real, but we, we wish, yes, we would like it to be, to be real. And I have just used the word wish, because wish works very well for unreal tenses. So if you put I wish before the expression, you, uh, you make uh, the very similar sentence, just like with uh, if only. So I wish I had more time, I would meet you more often. And this is the golden rule. If you want to talk about this speculation for the present, you would use the past uh, uh, past tense, past reference. Mind you, what happens in the past? What happens in the past for the unreal tenses, it is exactly what happens for the third conditional. So we use the past perfect. So we have to step backwards with one tense. For the present, we go to the past. For the past, we go to past perfect. So this past that is even more past than the past, I hope. Uh, you are following me, and I hope it's easy to to, to follow, to uh, to understand. A sentence example uh, here is, I wish um, I hadn't attended this party because it was so boring. And the question is, did you go to the party? Of course you did, because you present your wish. I wish I hadn't done that, but I did. So the fact is, I went to the party, and it was very boring. I only wasted my time. Mind you, here you need the past perfect uh, reference to to build a sentence. And with this very sentence, your speaker knows that you are talking about the past, not about the past perfect element, but you are talking just about the past. So when you use the past with unreal tenses, you talk about the present. When you use the past perfect with unreal uh, tenses, you use um, use past uh, perfect. For the other part, yes, I, I, I would. Yeah, this is this is speculation for the present, uh, in the unreal tense. So, um, I would visit you if I had more time. I would um, join another course uh, if I wasn't so busy. I would do this or I would do that. And this would is this speculation for the present. You ask us very often about that. Is how to build speculation, how to talk about something you would like to happen, but actually it it doesn't happen. And there you go. So this is exactly this would element. And if I were to build this bigger picture once again to show you how these strings are attached, how these elements are put together, so that, again, when you speak the language, you see the the dots, you can connect the dots, you you see all of these elements, Um, I will put... Um, speculation in the past, I would put unreal tenses, I would put conditionals um, in one drawer, I would put in uh, one hole, in one bag, because actually this is this one thing. So when you study, you uh, put it, you divide it into little elements, but then immediately you put all these elements together because conditionals, unreal tenses, and speculations in, uh, speculation in the past, it is not something that works separately, but it actually works together. The same with tenses as such. 
So many students spend so much time studying tenses, regular tenses, months, one tense, and they compare it with another, then another tense, and they compare it yet with another. But they never look at them as a whole, but they make this whole structure. Every tense that is that is simple has something uh, common with one another, and every tense that is continuous has something common with another. Let me repeat, let me revise. Conditionals, unreal tenses, and uh, speculation in the past, it is one element of uh, grammar with some golden rules that I have just presented, and I hope it will help you study the language and understand it all. <laughs>